Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a four-sided slider card or a quadruple slider card. Um, it is basically just an upgrade of the slider card I made last year, which has been really popular and I'll share the links to that one for you. Um, and this is just basically making two more extra pieces and making it a four-sided version. So I have this um, envelope which I've made to fit it because there's quite a few other elements to it. And this is half an inch um, by seven, yeah, seven by seven, then half an inch in depth. But this it, on its own is a really nice little project as well, just if you've got any kind of thicker cards. So I've made this cool little fastening, which I like to use. Um, it's really, really easy. I've probably made the string too long, because as you can see, <laughs> I've wrapped it around quite a few times. But anyway, just remove that, and then inside is your card. Now, I haven't put it all together because I wanted to show you how it looks with or without a stand because that was one of the differences I made with the slider card, that, the double slider card I made last year is they're really, really nice cards but I kind of wanted it to sit upright. I didn't like the thought of it just being kind of laid down flat and no one could really appreciate it. So that one is on a stand just like this. So this is a stand that I've made. So this is the four-sided one. So you can see one, two, three, four, whereas a double one will just have these two here. And basically, so it's a Father's Day theme, so I've just decorated all of the front there. And then all you do is just pull out and you see the two reveal that way. And then from the top here, you can just get it all into shot and they slide out that way. So this is a really, really fun card. Obviously, I haven't decorated these two yet. You know, sometimes you just kind of, I don't know, I lost what I wanted to put there, so I still need to look at my stash and see what other things I can kind of pull out because it needs to be obviously different to these pieces here. But I put some Black Nouveau drops there. I think I might add some ribbon. Obviously not on these pieces. These bits need to be flat because they need to be able to slide in and out. So these are completely flush. Um, I've just fussy cut these from the papers. Now this is the Mr. Mr. collection from last year by Do Crafts. Um, the stamps and the papers is all by them so I'll share any links because you can still get hold of it from some places so now basically obviously if you put all this back in I then want to have it on a stand which would basically I'm going to stick it so this tab obviously isn't coming all the way down because you don't want it to um, interfere with it standing up so it'd be something like that but it just means that I can pull out so say these pieces here have pulled out that would be on its stand like so and it will stand up like that and that's what the double slider card looks like and it does look really nice so I've made the envelope to fit this because I will be sticking mine down I want it to be on the stand so basically when that's all then popped together and you imagine it'd be up by about that height there it will all fit you can see there it all fits perfectly inside this really nice deep envelope again all securely closes and I'll probably shrink that down a little bit because it is quite long but there you have it so let's crack on and make it now it is easy there's just lots and lots of elements and card and steps so you need to be really organized with it so you make sure you get everything kind of prepared um, so you know where you are um, just grab my sandwich bag here as well although I've got seem to have had quite a few this is for the sliding mechanism so it doesn't need to be clear, it can be any kind of, it needs to be kind of a, quite a smooth, shiny plastic. So even a plastic bag will work. Okay, so this is my baker's twine to just um, tie up the envelope, the box. But I might use this red twine, I'm not entirely sure yet. I've made, I've prepared my sticky strips for when I come to put it together. And I've already done one of them. So I'll pop that one to one side. So let's talk through. I think first of all, this is the stand. So I'm going to do that last because we don't need to worry about that right at the minute. And then there for the tabs, which we'll talk through. That's for the envelope. And then just sorting all my bits out here. And that's for the envelope. And that's for the cut. Right. So for the envelope, I need those pieces there as well. Okay, so you're going to need, all of this will be listed in my blog, but I do know that a lot of you do write them down as I say them in the tutorial. So for the envelope, you need two pieces. Don't worry that this one is shorter because I'm going to doctor this, but you need two pieces that are eight by eight, okay? 
um, we'll score them when we get to that point and then for the flap to close it you need a piece that's seven by three and three quarters or seven by four will be fine or seven by uh, three and a half will be fine okay um because it was from the same piece that i cut this from so it was all from one piece of a4 the the lid and one of the sides then to decorate the front it's just one piece of six by six from this pack now the mr mr pack does come in 12 by 12 and i cut it down to six by six sizes so this to decorate the front that is just one sheet of six by six that i've just stuck and it's got this nice border so that's that piece there then i've die cut these from my smallest little circle from my nest of circle dies so just um, cut two of them and then the next size down again i cut two and that is just to create this fastening now if you have velcro dots magnets um, any other way that you want to uh, close it you can do you might just want to put double-sided tape underneath and stick it shut that's fine okay so that's everything for the envelope and then i've got a couple of brads Ooh. For the decoration and obviously that baker's twine okay but that's everything there to prepare for your envelope then for the main card itself so let me just look through so for the very front piece okay you need a piece that's five and a quarter inch squared and then i've already got my mats so i've got two mats here i've got this one with simply the best and then behind that is this polka dot paper as well so the polka dot paper is five by five and that will mat on top of here okay like so and it's given me that black border and then the piece on top of that again is um, four and three quarters squared okay so that's your mat and your layer and your um, your main piece to the front of the card then to create the um, let's just pop that so then you need two pieces to sit inside to stick it all together so these are just put just mark these as your inside panels um, so this is five by five, so you need two pieces that are five by five, okay? Then you need two pieces, these are your, this is your mechanism, okay? So just put again two pieces for the mechanism and these measure four and three quarters squared, okay? So you need two of those. And then you need four pieces, so each one of these, so these, this is one of your sliders, okay? And you need four of these. So this is five by three and a half and then my mat to go on top is four and three quarters by three and a quarter and again you need four of those now if you want to layer again on top of that then obviously you can just do that yourself um, but i put that little kind of shield with simply the best on it okay so four of each of those sizes okay so i think that is all of the card that i've gone through oh and then the stand so for your stand it's ten and a half by four and a half but again you you may you may not want to use that piece right let's first of all so we don't need um i'm going to make the envelope at the end as well let's just get straight into the card i think so working with your mechanism so this is your piece that measures so you needed two pieces that measure four and three quarters squared okay now i've started doing a little bit of this but basically this is what we are going to end up with okay and i will talk you through this and it is easy to do but you can see here how it slides so how that works and i've played around with these over the years and this is the way that i find works best and um, it's got a really smooth very um, uh, streamlined kind of look about it all right so it work it does work very well so along one of the sides because they're all the same so it doesn't matter which one you basically want to do a little pencil mark at half an inch in okay so half an inch and then again here oh half an inch then on the opposite side do exactly the same just move that there half an inch half an inch okay then along the other side do the same again so just half half and basically what we're going to create here is just little tracks for the plastic, the sandwich bags, to kind of sit in so they don't kind of fall off. So now with any of those ones, it doesn't matter which ones you want to join, but you just want to join up the opposites together, like so. You're only doing this with one of the sides. Okay, well, that one's gone a little bit skewy with for some reason. Why is that not? Oh, I didn't quite. There we go reline that one up quickly there we go then with the other ones you just want to line them you just want to draw a line just to that first pencil mark so you're just creating a little square in each corner 
and you're not going to see any of this so you don't need to worry about rubbing out the pencil or anything so you can see there what I've done okay so you're just doing the next pencil marks rather than going all the way down you just want to go up so you're just creating these little squares okay so then what we want to do is along the side where we've got the pencil line going all the way down I'm just going to grab my snips and basically you just want to cut down to the pencil mark like so if you want to use a, a cutting knife for this bit you can and then just get your scissors in there and just cut straight down there straight as you can because again this is where the plastic is going to run around so you're creating that look there and again like so so that's what you should have so you now want to do that with the other piece so you've got two pieces that look like this next you want to grab your sandwich bag so like I said it doesn't matter if it's got print on it or anything like that but you can see that I've got the two layers together so I actually want to cut this down so I'm just going to trim off we just want to create two strips of this plastic um, so I'm just going to take off the joining oh gosh don't use those scissors they are all sticky let's get rid of them and try again there we go so I'm just trimming off just that bottom piece there that joins it together and then we want this to basically sit inside this section here okay so you just measure along here and it is three and three quarters of an inch now we don't want it to be right up to there because you don't want it to catch so I will suggest that you need to cut at three and five eighths of an inch wide okay so I'm just going to come in here line this up because you need two pieces so keep the keep the double sides of the bag as you can see I've got two layers there the back and the front okay so keep it all like that just makes it easier and three and five eighths I'm just going to grab my black marker and three and five eighths and mark again three and five eighths and down the bottom three and five eighths and then I'm just going to roughly just do a couple of little lines just so I can cut along there okay and then we just want to cut just up like so okay so if you haven't got them double sided like I have then you need to cut this again but now I'm just going to open this one up like so and I'm just going to cut down that middle fold and then I've got my two pieces like I said don't worry if it's a little bit crooked um, once I start putting it together you will see but this is probably the, the fiddly, fiddliest bit the fussiest bit so now I've got these two panels that measure three and three uh, <laughs> three and five eighths of an inch wide in terms of length um, you want to make sure because I didn't actually even think about the length of it because these were just long enough but you need it to be um, so what's that so that's three six seven eight nine to give you room I would say make sure it's yeah um, no less than 10 inches just for the purposes of this well mine's nine and a half so that's fine between nine and ten inches long okay just so you I can, it's easy for me to put this together for you okay so next what we're going to do is grab one of your mechanism pieces here and sit it over there and just check that when you fold it over like so that it can move between and it's not catching so I can see that that's going to sit nicely in there okay so with the left hand side bring it like so and what you want to do is you want to put some double sided tape I'm just going to turn it that way like I said this is the hardest part of this card once we've done this it's all just decorating it and putting it together it's really easy so oh, I've got some of my black there I don't know where that's come from okay so what you want to do is just run as straight as you can some double sided tape and then I'm going to cut it and make sure none of this sticky tape runs over the edge you don't want anything sticking to this this needs to be able to freely glide around the, um, the card now with the excess bit that I've got I'm just going to cut that off okay like so so that's what you want to have 
Then we're going to be sticking this over. And don't worry that it's too long because we can trim it back in a moment. I'm just going to carefully remove the backing like so. And keeping that lying as flat as possible. Okay, you then want to bring this piece. I'm going to again pop it so it's facing this way. Keep that down. Bring this round. Now you don't want to pull it really, really tight, but you want it to be flat. You don't want it to be loose. So I'm not pulling it too taut, but enough that it's going to stay in place, like so. Okay, so now with this excess piece here, I'm just going to carefully trim that off. And now you'll see there that that runs and you want this sticky piece on the left so it can run all the way across to the right. And if you imagine in a minute, we're gonna have our slider piece on top. So as you pull it, that's the distance that it will come out by. Okay, don't worry if it run, kind of crunkles up a little bit because once the card's stuck on top, then it will stay, but this will be coming out in that direction, okay? So you need to repeat that again on your second piece, okay? So you'll have, like I said, two pieces like this. Now we can grab our, so I don't need that piece because I've already done it, but you need to do that twice. So now I've got my, you'll have four of these, but I've got obviously two that have already been done on here and I've already put my mats and my layers on there. So I've got these ones here and I'm just gonna stick these two I've already prepared on top of my black mats okay so I've just popped those both on there also I rounded off the edges so you want to round off um, on the on each side obviously make sure it's the corresponding because that one's going to be underneath like so so it'll be on one of them it'll be on the right hand side and on another one it'll be on the left hand side okay so now we need to stick these down so I'm just going to run some double-sided tape just along the very end there and again, make sure you've got nothing sticky overhanging. And don't worry if this is slightly thinner than this, that's fine, it needs to be that way. I've done all the measurements so that this works, so as long as you've got the same measurements, you'll be fine. Now you just wanna sit this, so make sure that the double-sided tape here is right, you know, right up to the edge here. And then you wanna sit this over the top, making sure it's perfectly straight and you've got an even gap. So if I just sit this down, because I'm trying to see with the camera like, oh, there we go. So you can see I've got an even gap between here and here. Okay, so now I just hold it like that as that slides, okay? And each time, just check and do it like this, you know, check that that does slide because you don't want to stick the other one down and find they don't work and then you've got to take it all apart and things like that, okay? Then flip it over and then now this one is gonna stick along this side Sorry, it's got to be that way. <laughs> Make sure you've got your, um, your mats facing up towards you. You don't want one facing away because that's the back. No one's going to see that. They need to face up the right way. So this time, you're going to pop your tape along. Oh, I just ripped a little bit of that on that side. And then, so it's, that one's that way. So then just flip it over and stick this one upside down again and you just want to line this one up with this one here. So make sure the ends of this, these sides, sorry, are in line with the sides of the one there. And then you know that it's all going to sit perfectly, like so. And again, you can see that I've got even. So now, when I bring it over, there is your slider. And that slides really nicely, really freely. And don't worry about all these bits here. You're not going to see any of that. It all just stays within this piece here that um, is going to be concealed. This is what you're going to see. So you need to repeat that again on your other one. So you will have two like this. And I would say now is the time to decorate these pieces. So if you want to stamp anything, make sure you keep everything completely flat. Remember, don't do anything with dimensions. So don't add embellishments or nouveau drops and um, foam adhesive, anything like that, because it will ruin the whole mechanism. It won't work. Okay, so crack on with those two. Okay, so you will now have two pieces like this, and I'm gonna talk through the foam in a minute. Next, you wanna grab these two pieces that you will have, which measure um, five by five, because these are gonna be um, 
our kind of um, dividers to stop so that each one can work by itself. So what you want to do is decide which one you want to be on the bottom, which is going to be the one that will pull out this way, and then this one will be the one on top and that would go up like that. Okay, so just decide what you want to be where. And then what you want to do is run some foam um, double-sided tape along the top and the bottom panel there. Okay, and then I'm just going to take off the backing. And you want to basically sit this one. It's best if you turn it over because then you can make sure that you get it right in and you just want to, it should have a little border all the way around like a one eighth of an inch and just make sure so you're completely concealing it now so you can see how now that perfectly slides in and out because this is stopping it lifting up and it should be really really free you shouldn't have anything catching anywhere okay so that's that one then this one here is going to sit on top but in this direction. So flip it over and you want to run foam tape along the underside, okay, of the one that's going on top. Okay, so again, every time you're doing this, make sure that if you're using anything thicker that it's not coming over the edges. You just, it needs to be free from anything sticky in order for this mechanism to work. So again, just remove the backing like so and remember it's got to be the opposite way to this one and this is now going to sit again perfectly inside this one like it does okay and now again just check that nothing is in the way of that one now the top one is going to have our main big piece going on so leave that one for the minute flip the whole thing over so you will have this now on your back and this one is going to go like so. So again, you need to run some foam, which I have run out of my strip. So I make my own strips. So if I just grab, so I use, um, this is grease proof paper. I think it's also known as wax paper, um, parchment paper possibly. I've used this and shown this in, sorry, it's quite noisy in lots of my live crafting that I've done. And basically just get your foam, and I could have cut that better, but I'm just quickly showing for the video. Just trim off the bottom. And the reason I do this is because it's, um, it doesn't damage your scissors. So, um, and it's a very inexpensive way to get thin strips of foam because this can be very expensive to buy. So now I can just very easily cut without any damage to my scissors all the way up, creating these strips. So there's one and there's the other ones. And these are great for shaker cards. This is what how I do my shaker cards. So now I've just got them so I can store them away for another project and grab these ones and then the backing just peels off just as it would if it was the same on the top. And this time you want to run it on the long side here. So just the same as we did on the opposite side of it, because that's what's attached to the underneath. Just trim off that one. And again, okay, again, remove the backing. And then this piece here. So remember it's the, um, grab my ruler again. It's the piece that's five by five. This is your back. So, and it should line up with the other five by five piece that's sandwiched in the middle. So use that as your guide and just stick that down. Okay, slide the whole thing over and then you wanna grab, again, some more foam and you're gonna run it along. So it is a deep, this is why I've got that deep envelope because it's a deep card. Um, but it's a really, really fun card and I do really enjoy these. So there's that one and this one here. So as I said, it is it is easy to do. There's just lots of steps. So get everything prepared, everything ready and you should be able to do it with no problem. Okay, so then that's that one. And then again, take your backing off. So, and now, 
So before I stick this down, I'm going to, so this is my front, so this is the, the biggest piece out of all of them. You'll just have one this size, which is the five and a quarter squared. You can go a bit bigger if you want, there's no reason why not. And then I've got the mat and the layer for there. And I've already prepared the backs here, so I'm just going to stick this one down. Again, you'll have a nice one eighth of an inch border, like so. And now this one needs to cover everything. So you just want to make sure, so I'm gonna look through my camera here and it will cover all of your four corners with a quarter of an inch border, like so. Okay, and there is the card. So it should be nice on the front, completely concealed on the back. And then these should all completely slide freely with no problems. That one's catching a little, oh no, it's okay. I think sometimes just give them a little bit of a, um, you know, a wearing, kind of keep using it a bit. But there you go, that is the card. So it's really, really easy to do. So now you can just go and decorate it and do whatever you want. But obviously I have made that envelope and the stand. So the stand, I'm just gonna grab my scoreboard and just put that one there a minute. So along the 10 and a half inch side, you wanna score at four, eight, nine, and 10, okay? That's all the scoring you need to do. And then just burnish the front, so you have the two big squares, so burnish that one down. Then the next one, do that one down. Then the one in the middle, up, and then the last one down. So you're creating that concertina fold and you should have like a, an M, there we go, you should have that shape. And then we're gonna run tape along here and stick that piece down. Okay, so I've just put my tape, gone over the edge a little bit there, let's just pull that back, there we go. And then just keep it all squashed down, bring this piece right over and it will, all fold flat like so and there's your stand so now decide you should have the back being the piece where the join is just because it looks nice this is the front where it's got that continue continual piece of card going all the way around decorate that with whatever it is that you want to put on top I would recommend a mat that is four and a quarter by um, three and five eighths and then that's going to sit and you want to make sure that this hasn't, actually we need to do our little tabs, that's what I forgot to do. I knew there was one extra bit. So you will then have these four pieces here, okay? And like I said, I've used the two smallest of my circle die cuts. And these are gonna be the little tabs. Now this, you don't have to have them. You can see this one, um, they come out quite well and I might not actually put them on this one. But if I just go back to this one here, because this was, I guess kind of my um, prototype. So um, there are a few changes, but you can see there where I've put the tabs on. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to use these or not, because you don't, I just think they just look fun, but you don't necessarily need to have them, but they will basically stick halfway down underneath, like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them all stuck down. Okay, so there's all my little tabs on it. Now make sure when you do this that the whole width of the box of the card is no bigger than seven inches. So you can see there, mine's exactly seven. So if you want to go in even a little bit more, that's fine. Like I said, you may not want to add them at all. And then that one there, you can see it's exactly seven inches. So that will now fit perfectly in the box. Okay, and then grab this piece, this is this, and make sure that whatever you've got at the bottom here, that it butts right up to the bottom of that, and that will mean it will still fit in your envelope. So if you've got the tab, make sure the tab sits flush, so this will still sit and um, stand perf perfectly. Or if you're just using that piece there, then make sure that that's flush with it. Now when you come to sticking it down, only put the glue on the main piece here. Don't put any glue on that, because you don't want it to obstruct but that's only if you want to use a stand. If you just want to present it like that, you can. And I'm still unsure whether I'm going to or not. So that's why I haven't put them on yet because I'm just going to kind of leave it for the minute. But I just think they are so, so fun. So now we can make the bag or the envelope for it. So let me grab, what's the other one there? Let's pop that to one side. Um, <clears throat> so I went through all the measurements. So the scoring, Let's grab my scoreboard again. 
So you'll have two pieces that are eight by eight and you want to score at half an inch and at seven and a half and then rotate it and score at half an inch. And that's it. You want to leave one free because that's the top. And do that on both pieces. Then with the little flap, so the lid that we had, scoring along the three and three quarter inch side, you want to score at one inch and at one and a half. Okay. And then on that larger piece here, you can just corner around the edges if you want to. Get rid of that. That's all the scoring done. So now we just want to go and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, so choose which one you want to be the front and that will have obviously this on it, but don't stick this on until we've got the flap and everything on it. So with this piece here, you just want to cut up like so. Okay, and just take a little bit off of the bottom um, left and right hand sides there. Okay, and then we're going to pop a little bit of glue just on that square, so tiny, and just bring it around and inside and just stick that down. Okay, so you're just creating a very small, almost like you would if you were creating a box or a lid. It's just very, very thin. Okay, and then just do exactly the same on that other piece. Okay, so that's what you will have, like so. And then with the back piece, you want to, again, cut up each of those little squares and then this time remove them out completely and I'm just putting a little notch on those there just so you don't see any in these all sit inside perfectly and then this time this is going to sit over and this back piece is going to go right inside like so okay so they're all going to be inside it <laughs> doesn't want to play ah why's each one right let's stick it first because it's blatantly not going to play so with the bottom piece so you just remove the two squares completely so just with this whole piece here just run glue and the reason the back's sitting inside is so that the front is all flush and you've got a nice look and you don't see any joins so like so and then it's going to sit on the bottom like so and it's half an inch so it will fit in there perfectly and then I'll grab my bone folder and just spread out all that glue like so and just make sure at the front there it's all nicely joined okay and then again make sure your front is only the back that you're putting all the glue on so again just run all down that tab and then you're just going to pop it inside like so and just make sure that all and with the top piece there just make sure it all joins in and lines up nicely which it does and if you pop it on its side with your ruler and just make sure it's all nicely stuck down and just repeat that on this one so again make sure it's the back piece that you're gluing so on this one here and this tab's slightly shorter because I literally had this piece left and I thought oh, for the sake of a quarter of an inch I'm not going to cut into a brand new piece of cardstock and then again that one just pop it underneath just going to go inside okay so that's what you should have this pocket okay and because you put the front down you should have nice clean constant flowing card on the front and it's this back piece which has gone inside all of those bits there okay um then oh i know what i should have done is the hole punch so maybe let's do this now because we can put something in i'll show you how you can do that so that's going to be your lid so just kind of roughly put it in place there and then let me just see how far down this one was so three and a half inches down so just take that out for a minute so get the middle of this seven so it'd be three and a half and then it's three and a half down again I'm just going to put a little pencil mark like so um actually I need to decorate it I should have done that first it doesn't matter it's, like, it's entirely up to you 
So I said don't do it because of the lid, but actually let's just stick it on. So I'm just going to run some tape over this. Okay, so this is six by six. Forget about that little marker I've just done. You just want to make sure you've got an even border. If it's six by six, it should be a half inch border on each side, which that is. Let's turn that over. Stick that down. Okay, then I can do the three and a half again. So that was three and a half by three and a half so it's going to be there this is all going to be covered so don't worry and then i've got a piercing mat if you don't have a piercing mat this just fits inside i believe because i've done it last time um you can put a ruler underneath there just to hit against but basically i'm just going to pope pope pop a hole just in there pull that out again like i said if you don't have that just put your ruler in underneath just to give you some you know a surface and then you can just poke through it there um okay so now we can get this stuck down so you want to add glue so you've got your larger side that's your flap then you've got this here which is going over the top and then this is the back so you just want to run glue all along there okay and then flip it over and this will sit perfectly on the back you want to stick it up to that score line so just fold it over, make sure it's all lined up, and open it up, and if you just go inside, you can stick it, push it down on it. Okay, and then we need to create the hole on this piece. So again, come in at three and a half, because the whole piece is seven inches wide. So I'm just gonna, three and a half, and then just find the middle from that score line to here, which should be one and three quarters, one and a quarter, sorry, yeah, one and a quarter in. Again, put a little cross there and then just poke a hole in like so. Then I have these two pieces, so again, I'm just going to poke a hole through in the middle like so. And get rid of all of that. And I think I'm going to use that red actually because it's going to match much, much nicer. So the top one. Grab your brad, so I've got another red brad here, so I'm just popping that through the middle. And then with this piece here, I'm going to tie a loose knot first and then go over the top and actually knot it around there, okay, like so. And I'm then going to add some glue all the way around this because we want this to stick. This is just going to stay there permanently. And I'm just going to cut off that excess, like so. So the, the brad's still closed, we'll open it in a second. So now, pop it through that hole, like so. Push it right down so that glue, and it starts to stick, and then just split the pin underneath. Okay, so that's what you should have on the top. And then with this bottom one, you don't want to add the glue. You're just going to pop this one in and split it like so. And then when you bring this one down, once you've done it a few times, you just need to kind of help it a few times to lift up a bit. And then you can wrap it around. And I'm only going to do it three times. <laughs> don't need all of that. But there is your envelope. Okay, so now I can undo this, like so, and whether you've got the stand or not, that will fit inside perfectly. And I just think that makes a really lovely gift, perfect for a special occasion, whether it be weddings, anniversaries, christenings, you, yeah, you know, you can use it for anything, but there you have it. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've explained it well enough. I think I have. Um, if anything, this um, envelope ended up being more of a challenge. Um, but I absolutely love them, and I think they're really, really fun um, to give to people. So I just need to decide what I'm going to do on those pieces there. And uh, there's that one there. So there you go. So as always, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.